Across the shifting sands of time, ancient Egyptian pyramids have remained a mystery. The unsolved secrets of the beacons of the Sahara have led to theories that revolve around energy sources, interdimensional portals, and extraterrestrial guidance. How are the pyramids aligned with the Earth with such great precision? What is the mystery behind their alignment with the stars? Why did they encrypt mathematical knowledge in their constructs? Can we say for sure that these works of ancient civilization are purely man-made creations? Or are there hidden clues in Giza for the otherworldly inspirations behind the pyramids, if they ever so return? Today on Crunch, we will understand what codes are hidden in the Plateau of Giza that have amazed archaeologists. There has always been a conspiracy around the purpose behind the construction of the Pyramids of Giza. From elaborate tales of technology well ahead of their time, to assistance from the galaxies far away, people have come up with all sorts of theories to explain their existence. Many eyebrows were raised when Tesla and SpaceX CEO Elon Musk added a startling remark to the ring. In July of 2020, in a late-night tweet, Musk said that aliens built the pyramids, obviously. This tweet received about 500,000 likes and surpassed 80,000 retweets. Due to the crazy response the tweet generated, Egypt's Minister of International Operations, Rania al-Mashad, invited Elon to Egypt to study the evidence supporting pyramids being 100% man-made. Zai Hawass, a well-known archaeologist from Egypt, reacted strongly to Elon Musk's tweet with a video post on his Instagram handle citing evidence that proves Musk wrong. What you said about the pyramids is completely hallucination. Well, Elon is not the first to make such an absurd claim. In the 1980s, a researcher named Robert Bouval came up with a suggestion that has since buried itself in the minds of the public. He pointed out that there are similarities between the layout of the three pyramids of the Giza complex and the stars of Orion's belt, and some relate to this arrangement directly to the astral beings. Well, have a look for yourself. Now, such unfounded claims are everywhere. They're on TV shows, in movies, and in books. Think of the History Channel series Ancient Aliens, currently in its 18th season, or Indiana Jones' 2008 movie about the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, or Eric von Nyken's classic book, Chariots of the Gods. It's all about extraterrestrial beings who influenced ancient technology. Just entertainment, right? Of course, we don't believe in the existence of some little green men, at least. Yet. Then, how did they acquire mathematical knowledge equivalent to modern times? There are dozens of claims that suggest the ancient Egyptians encoded their elaborate knowledge of mathematics while building the pyramids. What are you talking about? A popular bit of too crazy to be a coincidence trivia suggests that the location of the Great Pyramid of Giza is in some way cosmically aligned with the universe because its latitude in decimal degrees is 29.9792458 north. And if you play around a bit with the decimal, it gives you the exact speed of light in a vacuum as expressed in the contemporary metric system. 299,792,458 meters per second. Amazing! How is that even possible? The people who built the pyramid must have known the speed of light. But think about that for a moment. The Great Pyramid is large and covers more than just one latitude, from latitude 29.980150 to latitude 29.978150. That means there are approximately 2,000 different latitudes to choose from. One of them happens to be the speed of light in meters. It isn't the point through its apex either, and the number given is not the geographic location of the pyramid, as it's just a degree of latitude that runs across the entire surface of the globe. So, millions of locations that you can point on this line are equal to the speed of light, meaning this was most likely a coincidence. Egyptians of that time would have been more likely to express such a theoretical concept as the speed of light in cubits per second, as the cubit was the unit of measurement back then. And how do we know that? A number of these rods have survived. Two of these rods were found in Saqqara, inside the tomb of Maya, the treasurer of the 18th century dynasty pharaoh Tutankhamun. 
Another was found in the tomb of Ka in Thebes. The cubit rods found so far range from 523.5 to 529.2 millimeters in length and are divided into seven palms. Each palm is divided into four fingers and the fingers are further subdivided. The cubit was based on the distance from the elbow to the tip of the middle finger, but it varied around different parts of the world during antiquity, as well as during the Middle Ages and as recently as early modern times. Flinders Petri, a renowned Egyptologist, has made some calculations leading to one Egyptian cubit being equated to approximately 0.525 meters. Using this approximation, one ancient Egyptian cubit puts the speed of light at 571,033,253 cubits per second. Converting this number into latitude via the same approach would require the pyramid to be somewhere in Western Russia to have its location correspond to the speed of light. The practice of finding significant numbers in the measurements of the Great Pyramid has its origins in pyramidology initially a religious phenomenon that later evolved into pseudoscientific speculations about pyramids. Modern pyramidology is generally thought to have begun with the publication of the book The Great Pyramid, Why Was It Built and Who Built It by John Taylor in 1859. He claimed to have discovered all kinds of mathematical truths in the structure of the pyramid. He was the one who discovered that dividing the height of the Great Pyramid into twice the side of its base arrives at a close approximation of pi. He is also the one who found the golden ratio, PHI, in the structure. There is a theory based on the idea that our body parts are designed according to the golden ratio. Well, the Egyptians had body parts, and if the Egyptian cubit was connected to the length of the arm, it was connected to the golden ratio. Interesting trivia, but not necessarily an extraordinary detail about pyramids. There are also the claims that the Great Pyramid of Giza is a replica of the Earth at a scale of 1 to 86,400. Weird, because nobody remembers Earth being shaped like a pyramid. Another one mentions that if you measure the base of the pyramid in inches and play with the decimal once more, it would give you the exact length of a year, that is 365.24 days. The list of such examples of apophania goes on. Do you see what's happening here? First, the conspiracy theorists use meters to equate to the speed of light. Then they used inches to get the number of days in a year. Most people greatly underestimate the enormous amount of possible combinations between numbers, and this has made it easier for many pseudo-scientific misconceptions to emerge, grow, and gain public acceptance. When measuring a structure like the Great Pyramid, you're going to come up with an abundance of measurements to play with. One only has to cherry-pick the numbers that will coincide with important figures, events, and phenomena that fits their theory. In an effort to debunk these fringe theories, Dutch astrophysicist Cornelius de Jaeger demonstrated the dimensions of any object can be manipulated to yield the desired outcome by deriving the speed of light and the distance between the Earth and the Sun from the measurements of a bicycle. We might even witness a day in the future when some numbers from the Great Pyramid equate to the number of moons of Jupiter, or the date the Hubble telescope was launched, just to add another conspiracy that ancient Egyptians were capable of predicting the future. So, what are your thoughts on all this? Leave us a comment below. Thanks for watching Crunch. See you in the next video.